Well, shoot, don't you hate it when you get a comeback? This came back. My wife says, the buttons are getting hard to press once again. Remember I just serviced it with acetone, nothing else, just cleaned the board, and it worked excellent. But now, I've gotta put considerable pressure to get some of the buttons to actually work. She uses the volume a lot. It's programmed for a Sony TV. What the? Oh, <laughs> it works this other TV. Isn't that something? Oh, good to know. So that's a Sony. Uh, I don't even know what brand that stupid thing is. Scepter, I think, Scepter TV. Same code as a Sony. Yeah, it's working the Scepter. Anyhow, the wife says the button's getting hard to press, so this is kind of a priority. Happy wife, happy life, you know. So let's go ahead and try to service this again. This time, we shall use keypad fix. There it is, keypad fix. I got this probably five or six years ago. Anders Products in Andover, Massachusetts, I believe, 01810 to Connector Road. So. I think I put like a little, maybe a 1032 or a 1024 nut in here just to kind of shake this stuff up. So we'll get the batteries out of this guy, get it disassembled. Hopefully I don't have to reprogram it. Hopefully it remembers. Get the key out right there. And since I just had it apart, well, when I say just, it was nine months ago been working pretty good since. Eh, if it leaves little divots, I don't think she's going to care as long as it works. Somebody reprimanded me for using a butter knife to take it apart. I'll tell you what, that butter knife has been taking apart electronics since about 1977. Maybe that not that exact butter knife, but other ones have. Come on. Oh, why do you got to be like that? I see it. Ah, it popped, finally. Once you pop, you can't stop. I should pump up the exposure. Almost. Oh, there's a little switch to hickey. And we're in. Well, the keyboard looks perfectly fine. Yeah, the pads look pretty good. I've definitely seen better, but it's not the end of the world. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean all the pads again with the cotton swab with acetone, and then we will apply keypad fix, keypad fix to all the pads. And uh, we'll let it dry probably six hours or so, and then we'll put it back together and give it another try. Put a little acetone in a Pyrex dish. That should be more than adequate. It's just regular acetone, nothing special, fast drying solvent. Scan for info, there you go. If you wanna scan that, there you go. Cotton swabs, these are actual Q-tip branded swabs. So let's move that half out of the way. And I just wanna go ahead and wipe off all the pads once again, just in case there's any possible residue on those guys. Should I just get a paper towel and just wipe off the whole board? Other end of the swab. Hopefully you can still see it. Okay, I think we're all cleaned up really good. New cotton swab. One 
One commenter noted that in the past he's taken pieces of aluminum foil and cut them into these little circular dimensions and glued them onto the pads and has said he had extremely good results doing that. And I believe it. Okay, happy with that. All the pads have been cleaned. The circuit board's been cleaned. Let's get ready to add some keypad fix. Let's shake it up really, really good. And I'll be back in one moment. All right, let me see if I can get a better zoomed in view here. If it'll stay focused for a moment. Let's go back to auto magical focus. I have it in manual focus now. Wonder how far I can push it before it defocuses. Oh, that's it right there. Oh, we're gonna call it good right there. So let's put it back in Manuel. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pop the top off the keypad fix. And of course the little stopper came off with it. All right, so I have a small screwdriver. I'm just gonna go ahead and dip the tip and just add it way too much, way too much. It'll dry, it'll be fine. Once it dries, you can actually use a little knife to get rid of the excess.
Okay, all the switches have been coated, I do believe. This one doesn't look too terribly good. Just want to make sure you get it all the way around on all the buttons. And as you can see, some of them are already beginning to cure, especially up here. So once they've fully cured, I'll go ahead and get rid of the whoopsie doodles that I made right there. And then there's a couple more like that one right there. We'll clean that up as well. That one, that one, that one. And then I think maybe dig out a little bit out of that one as well. Okay, one moment while this thing cures. Okay, so it's been a few moments, probably an hour almost, and I thought I would go ahead and refocus this so everyone can have sharp, clear focus. And we are in manual focus. So I just want to go ahead and very gingerly try. Oh, shoot, the whole thing came off. Well, I think we're gonna leave the rest of them as is. I probably should recoat that button, which is the, nope, not gonna worry about it, DVD. We don't use that button whatsoever. I'm just gonna let the rest of them fly the way it is. They may not be 100% cured, but I think they're cured enough that I can slap this thing back together and hand it back to my beautiful wife and she can have many, many more months of remote control operation. So let me zoom out just a tad. And I gotta find where, what, where did, oh, there it is, okay. There is the circuit board with the little UHF transmitter board on it right there. Okay, it is in place, I do believe. I think everything is good at that point. And we'll try to just snap this very easily back together, maybe. Gotta make sure the springs line up on the other end there. Oh, you know what, I didn't put the switch little doohickey back in. Doggone it. Okay, so how does this... How does it go back together? I believe... that it actually goes just like that. Okay, yep, happy with that. Yep, looks good. And I believe this was the number one remote right there. And so that's what actually moves this little slider back and forth, whether it's number one or number two, because the offset is, well, offset. Number one, 
find a Phillips screwdriver. Four batteries going back in. Trying to get some of the cat hair off here. And a battery cover going back on. Okay, set. Uh, let's try TV. Oh, very light press. So let's try the volume button. Oh, just the slightest. Oh, why is that one? Minus is working, but why is plus? Oh, wow. Did I forget to coat the plus? No, oh, it's going to come apart again. All the other buttons are working quite nicely. One, two, three. Now yeah, let's pop it apart and find out why the plus button takes so much minus barely touch it and it works the plus takes more okay well let's you learn from your mistakes right it's the definition of insanity Oh well, it'll be fine. All right, mental note, do not forget to put this back in before assembly again. No, the plus volume is, uh, it's coded. Perhaps it's not completely dry. Circuit board looks just great. Well, I'm just gonna put it together, let it fly, give it back to the wife and she see what she has to say about it. It won't stay there, really. All right, there's a possibility it's not 100% dry yet. So like I said, I'm gonna put it back together and we'll give it a try in a few more hours. Well, it's all back together once again. And uh, the minus is working excellent. The plus does require just a hair more pressure than the minus does on the volume at least. But I'm gonna let it fly. Like I said, it's the wife's. If it's not good, I will order a replacement refurb remote from somewhere. Somewhere I think I have another remote. I thought I had one laying around in here somewhere in my workroom, but I don't see it at the moment, so yeah but I can always reprogram it if necessary. All right, gonna end it there and probably post just a little doobly-doo in the comments as to whether once it dried and cured for 24 hours, if it's any better at all. I think those only work in the sat modes maybe. Yep. Okay, well that's working perfectly. Power button is nice and easy to work. Perfect. Okay, well, better than it was. Remember, keypad fix. Had great luck with it. And once again, there is a close-up view. AndersProducts.com is where you can get this. I think I got it on Amazon. 
to Connector Road, Andover, Massachusetts, 1801810. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.